Hello YouTube, this is Carlos with CHS Electronics. Uh, this is a quick video on the uh, on the 898D Plus SMD rework station. Uh, I bought this unit not too long ago, maybe about a week or so ago. And I uh, realized they may have some problems with it, being that it comes from China. But uh, basically I bought the unit so that I can uh, reverse engineer it and see if I can maybe uh, modify the circuit or, or uh, improve upon it. Since uh, I know some of these have, uh, have issues with them and that they uh, tend to catch on fire almost but anyways uh, here's the board it uh, single-sided components on one side and buttons and LED and the display driver I see is on the other side now these boards are, are fairly uh, fairly cheap they're, they don't look too well made but if we look closer into the board here, we see here the two triacs. This one's a uh, BT-137-600E. It's a 600 volt 8 amp, I believe. Uh, here's your uh, MOC-3041T uh, optocoupler used for firing this triac. Here's your uh, BTA. 16 600 this is also another track and this one is used to control the heating element on your heat gun and this one's for your soldering iron and here's its optocoupler to uh, to to trigger that that track on the bottom here we have uh, the Samsung microcontroller and here we have the LM358. Here is a TIP122 uh, Darlington MPN transistor. And here we have our um, LM7805 5 volt voltage regulator. So all in all it's a simple circuit. Oh and before I forget down here we have an AT2402 uh, or C2, CO2, sorry, uh, EEPROM. I guess to store the settings of where you last were from the microcontroller. So as you can see it's pretty simple, pretty basic. Uh, the circuit is always live. The only thing you disconnect with these bottom switches is the the neutral. Other than that, everything else is connected to live and it stays live or stays hot, should I say. But uh, I managed to reverse engineer this board and I got the schematic from it and I got uh, a new board layout out of it. and. I think it was a well invested project and in time since uh, I'm able to make my own board and change out this chip for uh, this chip for one that that I could program like a PIC 16 20 pin. So anyways, to the schematic. Here is the schematic. A little bit close up. Let me show you a better Here's the total schematic. As you can see, um, I managed to get everything down. I got, uh, I got the, I figured out how the heat gun works, and I made a uh, detailed description of it. So there's that for you guys. Also, I, um, I will talk about this schematic here briefly. For the soldering iron power switch, all we do is bring one of the inputs to the microcontrollers to ground, and the other side disconnects 
the hot from the uh, low side of the transformer to to the neutral and uh, the other side the other switch does the same thing disconnects the hot or the low side of the transformer from the neutral and also brings the uh, the input of the microcontroller here to ground through a secondary switch so that's that here's the connections to the transformer and the heating gun element here is the circuit that powers the heat gun it's got uh, filters and snubbers and here's the triac and the optocoupler that is used to fire this triac the circuit looks to be pretty much well well made since it's got filters and snubbers on it uh, the only thing that I can think of that would cause this circuit to fail or this triac to fail is if it was live and it was shorted to ground and therefore causing uh, this to fail short and then turning on the heating element without the microcontroller being on and knowing so moving on here we have the the triac that controls the soldering iron and it's directly connected to the secondary 26 volt output of the transformer so this one's fairly isolated but uh, unless the power switches are on it will never be active unlike the uh, the heating element for for the heating gun down here we have the sensor uh, filter and the sensor circuit sorry for the soldering iron and it most likely uses a thermistor of some sort or maybe even a thermocouple but as you can see it's fairly uh, one half of the ELM358 op amp and inputs are filtered, outputs are filtered and it goes directly into the input of the microcontroller basically the same circuit for the heating element it uh, comes in gets filtered and then spit back out filtered and you can adjust the uh, the settings with these two pots on either one of them also we have here on the other side we have the power circuits so from the transformer sorry it's not the secondary uh, volt 26 volts it's for another one 34 volts AC sorry you have two uh, secondary coils here one powers a bridge rectifier that uh, when rectified gets up to 48 volts DC and it's sent through this tip 22 uh, Darlington transistor and out to feed power to the to the fan on the on the heat gun this uh, transistor here uh, when it's when it's activated uh, turns off power to the heat gun but when it's set high it provides full power to the heat gun this one here which is controlled through a potentiometer which is the, your speed control um, allows the variable control of the output power that comes out on the emitter of this uh, Darlington transistor and then this connector here just sends the power that goes directly to the fan motor here we have the uh, the uh, LED display controller and as you can see the segments 1, 2 and 3 don't correspond with A, B and C but I guess they, they use proprietary software to make that work for them uh, I, this is a Chinese part by the way and I did manage to find a uh, data sheet for it but it's not very uh, it's not very helpful since it's written in Chinese although Google Translate can translate the sheet for you uh, button inputs for up down and enter are simply tied to ground and into the to the inputs of the microcontroller the microcontroller is a Samsung microcontroller which is a 20 pin device which I plan to replace with a uh, PIC 16F 20 pin the only thing I would have to do is swap the power and the ground for the PIC because they're reverse on the Samsung 
And then up here we have the AT24CO2, which is an EEPROM, and it's used to store the data that we last kept the station at, you know, for temperature settings and whatnot. And basically, that's it for this, uh, for this schematic. Uh, as you can see, it's not, uh, it's not very complicated, but it, it, it did take some time to try and figure out where everything was. And once I uh, got a better understanding of, of how everything was laid out, then everything started to make sense. So uh, here I can show you some of the, the data sheets of these components. For example, this is the display, the three-digit display. Now the part number here states it's a ULT 4301AX, but it's actually just a 4301AS. The A signifies that it's a common cathode, and basically here are the dimensions, and here's the, the schematic of the device. Being that this is exactly the same as the component that's on there, even though it's through a different manufacturer, I think the pinout and and the dimensions are are the same and they're pretty much standard so then we move on to the uh, display controller which as you can see is a TM1620 but it's all written in Chinese and like I said you can get the uh, Google Translate to translate each page as you skim through the data sheet here we have uh, the uh, Samsung microcontroller made by Zilog and uh, there's the part number for you. Actually, it's this one, the S3F94C4. And as you can see, it's an S3 series. And uh, it's an 8-bit microcontroller. I guess it's a pretty basic one. Here's the Atmel EEPROM. It's a two-wire automotive serial EEPROM at that. So go figure. Maybe they, were, uh, they had excess on these and they bought them from somewhere that needed to get rid of them. And then moving on to our uh, all-time favorite LM358 voltage control oscillator circuit they provide here on the data sheet but you can look at that on your own. Here is the uh, MOC3041 triac driver so it's an optocoupler with a mini triac and it also uh, it's used to fire another triac Here's a, let me see if they have a, an application circuit where you can see it uh, looks very similar. This one in particular looks very similar to, to this one here, minus these two resistors, or the resistor and capacitor should I say, but everything else is basically the same thing except for the values. Well this one's the same, but R23 over here is, is slightly lower. So that might be some adjustment. Might need to change it back to a 360. Anyways, moving on to the next component. Here's the BTA16. This one's a 16 amp, and it's also rated uh, for the one that I'm that is implemented here is for 600 volts. But uh, as you can see, there you go. Everything you need to know about it, you can read that. And then here's the BT-137-600E, which I think this one is used for for the heating iron, for the soldering iron, sorry. So, as you can see, I don't think this one has an application circuit, but it might. I don't remember seeing one, though. Nope, no application circuit. Anyways, that's uh, those are the data sheets and uh, here is the board the board is uh, single-sided uh, I pretty much uh, instead of using through-hole components I went ahead and used uh, quarter watt surface mount resistors and surface mount capacitors and uh, through-hole components I basically kept the same here's the 7805 here's the tip 122 sorry right here and uh, here's the 358. I went ahead and swapped sides on the 
LED display driver and I put it on the component side instead of the reverse side but uh, I had to make these packages for the LED driver for the LED displays and and the LED driver sorry and I'm just using a generic 20 pin package for the Samsung microcontroller and the Atmel EEPROM so basically everything else here is the same component connectors are the same uh, packages are basically the same the only thing uh, I couldn't change was the whole placement and the position of the components such as the displays and the buttons because uh, those had to fit the existing location of, of the of the old board of the original board well anyways here's the board uh, tell me what you think uh, if you uh, found this interesting or if you like what I presented to you today uh, give me a thumbs up or leave a comment uh, or more favorable if you can sub sub subscribe and uh, I'll uh, post new videos soon. Um, see you guys. Thanks.